Oftentimes, a great way to make some for content pop is to give them a drop shadow, whether it's for aesthetics or for usability or for accessibility reasons. There's a lot of reasons why you might want to use a drop shadow. And one of the more common elements you want to apply a drop shadow to are SVGs. No longer are we stuck using PNGs and more raster type image formats. The vector scalable goodness that SVGs bring to the table totally could benefit from having a drop shadow applied to them. And in this video, we'll take a look at what it will take to apply a drop shadow properly on SVG element. So there are two properties we commonly think about when it comes to drop shadows. The first one is the box shadow property that exists in CSS. And as its name implies, box shadow applies the shadow to the bounding box of the element you're thinking about. So oftentimes you're going to get a rectangular kind of a drop shadow appearing behind it. If you round the corners a bit, the drop shadow will be rounded as well. Yes, Pixel just made an appearance on the screen. So he'll have to be credited now as part of the video. The other type of shadow that we often have to deal with are text shadow. And as its name implies, it applies primarily to text elements where the drop shadow isn't around the bounding box of our text, but each curve and special visual flare of our text, each character is represented appropriately and the drop shadow reflects that. As you can see here, we have the text, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog, but the drop shadow mimics it quite nicely. But here's the problem. When we're doing an SVG element, which in many ways does have a bounding box of its own, Text shadow will not work, let's just ignore that completely. If you apply box shadow on it, for example, here's the picture of a, a desert island SVG element. If we apply box shadow, what we'll get is a drop shadow that doesn't quite match the shape of the SVG we're trying to apply a drop shadow to. It instead applies it to the bounding box instead. And we don't really want that. But what we really want is something like this. We have the image and the drop shadow, just like it did for the text elements when using text shadow, it matches the curves and the various image and visual elements that the SVG contains. So instead of having one generic rectangular drop shadow, the shadow actually matches the content of our SVGs. And so the trick is to not use text shadow or box shadow, but use yet one more mechanism we have in CSS for being able to set the shadow on an element, and that is the drop shadow filter. So if you have an SVG element, instead of saying the drop shadow property or text shadow property, use the filter property. And for the filter property, specify the drop shadow value, the drop shadow function, which takes several arguments just like the traditional box shadow, filter, box shadow property. The first two specify the X and Y offsets of where our drop shadow is starting from. In my case, I want my drop shadow to be starting directly behind the element as if a light source was directly in front of it, not at an angle at offset. The third value specifies the blur or how diffused the shadow will be. And the last value specifies the color the drop shadow will be. You can specify hex values, RGBA values, HSL values, HSLA, the full gamut of color values you have available today. You can totally use that. But the end result is now the drop shadow is applied to SVG respecting the contours of the design inside of it appropriately. And so there you have it, a very quick overview of how you can apply a drop shadow to SVG elements, especially as they become more popular and become a more common part of the kind of designs we create on, the, on our browsers, it becomes very important to realize that the traditional shadow approaches we might have had in the past will work, but they won't give you the effect you're looking for. So from that angle, it doesn't work. And so you need to rely on the drop shadow filter to give you the effect that ultimately gets you what you're going after. If you found this video helpful and you have any questions about it, please post in the forums at forum.group.com where I and others will be happy to help you out, answer any questions you might have, and also just give you a chance to learn more about how web development works and interact with other community members who are web developers who enjoy and learning and doing cool things on the internet. Tell your friends and enemies about this video if you found it useful. Hit subscribe to be notified of more videos in the future. Follow me at Karupa on Twitter, on Facebook, and various other places to be kept up to date on small bite-sized things I might be posting. And if you like the content in video format, you might like it even more in a book format. Both all of this content exists in paperback and Kindle editions, maybe not in a book right now, but in any other kind of book that might be coming in the future. So in the description, there's a link to all the books I've written. It'll be pretty helpful. And with that, I will see you all next time.